I came to the answer right now. 60 years later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so in honor of 60 years since yes. this video was recorded. A little bit more. I think it was done in April. It was done in April. So a little bit more than 60 years. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, what it was like during that experience. And I, I thought we could just watch a little bit together. Okay. Yeah. There is Eric Friedman packing up. He just finished playing. And that's you. Yeah. Walking over to the music stand. That's Liz Mateski sitting there. On the there. right. Claire Hodgkins, uh, Carol Sindel. So that's See his voice. Carol Sindel. Drums, sonata, please. He was strictly business. Drums, sonata, please. I'm asking to turn now because between the third and second last moment. That is. If you notice how sparingly he uses any motion, yeah. that was his total being, everything very, very limited to the absolute minimum necessary. It had to do with all his demeanor. He doesn't do big movements, it's all very... So everything is... Absolutely. The third Efficiency. Speech too. It's good. It's a little bit too. There you have a compliment. It's good. It's good. <laughs> but. Very light. It's good. See, he always picked up the violin like this. Can you stop for a second? I wanted to comment it. You see, whenever you would have a master teacher and he would show you something like that, he would do everything he can to make it sound beautiful. You see him here, he says, He just emphasizes what in five notes, one note comes out. So he's just showing it without really trying to vibrate to make yeah. it sound good. It's just sort of... Okay, stop. You see, that was the article said. It's this, even the smallest phrase is alive. Let's, let's hear that one more time. It's a compliment, so it doesn't make a big fuss over it. But shape it. So the phrase always falls. So a lot of... of yes. Yeah, so it's this articulation. Mm -hmm. Each and every note is articulated. T dot dot. It's like parlando. T dot a note. T dot dot dot. T dot. What was going through your mind at this moment? Because <laughs> I see you very focused on. It looked like was it. His I was left watching hand? his fingers because that was the, the that was the lesson. Watch his fingers, because that tells you all. The angle, I was analyzing, it wasn't just which finger he takes. It's the, the angle, the way he vibrates, the way he, uh, every finger drops, the way his hand, you see, it's, uh, it's straight. From elbow to the fingertip, it's all straight. It's this freedom. You can tell his right hand is completely loose. That gives you that opens the possibility to this uh, portado with yeah. this parlando. It's this, always lose. You said that you are, uh, what I before told you, you always think up to your forum. You don't think beyond that. You have to think that you play up and down with your forearm, and this is just a slave to your forearm. And you leave, you leave it loose, because it's naturally, if you go up, you're, Palm will be dark, if you're down, 
you do this. So, if you don't think of your fingers on your wrist or, or your palm, you, all you hear is, and not your arm, because that's again subservient. Yeah. This, your forearm is what makes the sound. So how was Heifetz's arm working? You see the same thing. Well, see, you... Well, his elbow looks sometimes elbow a little bit... Elbow looks lower than... And is a, it's like this. Mm -hmm. The elbow is at the lowest point. Oh, here's a... Why? Why? He was going up. It's yeah. different. Because up is this. I see. Pulling up. So this is natural position. Yeah. Going down, your arm is below your forearm. Going up is the other way around. Your arm is higher. Who's doing it? This yeah. Way, yeah. And then up bow, same thing. I switch the angle. Yeah, on the violin even. Yeah. So you see, his position is this. His violin is, I'm sure you can see, but but he's holding it the way he's, exactly, see? It's this, 45 degrees. Easy. Right, nice <laughs> <laughs> you change the bows purposely all the time. You don't have to, you know. You see how little movement he does? Yeah. One of the few words I had. <laughs> yeah, that's a, one of the only times you talked. There. This is something I wouldn't oh, totally agree with. Huh? <laughs> this is something I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't do it up all today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but. but here's a here's yes. a question. So the music you were looking at yes. at that time, what was it? Was it an addition um, that Heifetz specifically requested? Or no, was there a no, studio no, fingerings no. and never, voice? No, no. He it would ask something. As, as I said yesterday, you know, Glenn asked him what finger, play it with your thumb, if it comes out, it's okay with me. He didn't care. Sometimes he would make a suggestion, but normally he didn't care what you did. But were there class fingerings or boings? Or no, anything? no, there no. Was not, the only uh -huh. thing was scales, you know, but he did, again, he didn't care what fingering you took. Yeah. It had to come out. Mm -hmm. So he... Okay, let's continue. Everyone. No. See how rough it sounds up close? Yeah. See, that's, that's how it is. Nice phrase. Play it with more. All of a sudden comes just yeah. like the... So how, how similar was the Heifetz mm -hmm. sound you hear on this video compared to what you remember when you were there in the classes? Well, he, he sounded very differently in the class. Because I said, for one thing, he didn't try to be... He never tried to play the, really, the way he the could. The best, you know. No, he, it was very matter of fact. He, when he was demonstrating something, he didn't care if he would, did a lot of vibrato, it sounded fantastic. You, know, a, you do... It didn't have to sound, it didn't have to, it wasn't the way he would play on the stage. I don't even... It's just to demonstrate, to prove a point. It 
was a little bit slower, but not as much as I did then. Yeah. That would be finishing the bova. Yeah. It's enough if you have a group of four notes, it's enough if you slow down one or two of them. Yeah. It already makes the point. So you don't make, you don't need to do a long time though. That's what he just saw. Okay. But he didn't explain it the way I said to him. Yeah, that. but you figured that out from watching. Well, that's what was. That was a class. That yeah. was, you know, what I was going through, always analyzing what did he do and what, uh, how did he do it and what effect does it. Yeah. What the purpose of it, what he did. Yeah. This is a typical spot for the parlando. Yeah. And then you go back to normal because you don't do it all the time. Otherwise, it's it right, so let's, money and boring. Let's, let's hear that one more time then. Yes. So, how long had you been playing this piece when you were playing this for him? And like, what was what was? I it think like? I started working on it. He told me, "Yeah, I brought Brahms on that. And maybe I played it before. I don't quite recall, you know." Yeah. But did you usually for these classes have rehearsals with Brooke uh, Smith? No, beforehand? no, no. We didn't. No, we honest. had to work. We had twice a week. There were six students. Can you imagine? He would be working twenty-four-seven. Yeah. If he had no, he was. I mean, Brooke Smith could, you know, he would just do anything. Yeah. I mean, he would be high for this pianist, you know. If he could you, do you know, that, what, yeah. Besides, he knew the whole repertoire, you know, everything. He would just follow, no matter what you did, he would do. You know, to have company high for sticks. Besides, there is another thing. What, I had more fights with pianists, not fights, but arguments, with accompanists. I'm talking about companies, not sonatas playing. More than telling them, follow me, I would say, please don't follow me. Which sounds like a paradox, but normally pianists are used to follow everything to do. And when I have a phrase, I told you, I slow down a little yeah. bit. He immediately starts slowing down. He says, no, I cannot possibly do any rebuttal if you keep following me. Because when I slow down, I don't want you slow. So the pulse stays. You have the you have the skeleton, and I need one, two, three, four. If I speed up on one, I will slow down on two, and I we are together on three, and it sounds free and rhythmical. Okay, yeah. going on. Yeah. <laughs> For a second? Yeah. Whenever I have a two double stops progression in the same position that requires changing both fingers on two strings, I don't use the same position. I either slide half a tone up or down. Why? Because if you have a legato connection of two double stops, either it comes very awkward. Doesn't sound. You have to stop the ball. Otherwise, you will get two open strings. The solution. Two, three, one, two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't see that in many editions. No. <laughs> His eyebrows were very expressive, like... <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Would I need the lessons if I could do everything perfectly in my face? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, moving on. When you play the Chicago stay in first position. Oh. No, come on. That's it. If you go in position, it will not be hard. That's much too. Stay in first. Hard enough to hear it as it is in the first room. Now finish it up. I want to, I want to hear how you go into the last moment. Finish it. Are you ready for the last moment? Quick question, why were you doing those pizzicatos? What do you mean, why? It, isn't it? It's in the school. It's I don't remember, maybe it told me. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe some addition. Yeah. Same tempo. That was his face the whole lesson, you know, it wasn't very encouraging, you know. So, so the entire time when the cameras were on you, that was what you were looking at, yeah. so you, if you ever looked over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you play with somebody looking at you like that, you know, you, <laughs> you're lucky. Then you feel very comfortable afterwards when anyone else is looking at you. Yeah, okay. If you could take that, you know, you can play anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's priceless expression. Yeah. What, what do you think about... But he didn't say why. What do you think? You've, you've had a long time to think about it. Why did he say down ball? He didn't explain it. I still don't know why. <laughs> I, oh. I would say... You can treat it as a hemiola. Mm -hmm. You can think it rhythmically in different ways. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then you start that. But basically, it doesn't go in three. One, two, three was. Yeah. It goes in two. Mm -hmm. And you, do you think maybe also because the piano. Yeah. Oh, I know now. It occurred to me. You see, when you started down bow, you emphasize the counting three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Da, 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 da. It will be against the grain. One, two, three, one, three, one, three, one. One, two, three, one, three, four, five, six. One, two. It goes into six. Yeah. And it would not. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I came to the answer right now. 60 years later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're here together. <laughs> okay. Oh, he will say something. Start on the G, play on G. And did you avoid vibrating before you start playing? You did it again. Uh, I see a vibration and then the sound comes afterwards. It, it looks as if it's not synchronized somehow, you know? Hey, so what, what do you think he meant by that? So basically, you vibrate before you play the note and, and, and then, then usually stop. comes a blank note afterwards. Yeah. You hear it because you are content to have it. I was content to have it in tune. Yeah. So I was plucking. And then you, 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 that was his do. You start by the uh, vibrato on the note, not before. Yeah. Because also, why it's bad? He didn't say that. 
because we will start vibrating and then come down with the bow, the chances are that I will come out of pitch because you keep vibrating, you can come on G sharp or the G flat a little bit above yeah. all the, but the, the intonation won't be good. You see people, the, you make sure you are in tune. Yeah. Just under the ear. Nobody hears it, but you can see. I could see it. People see it who know better. Okay. You get there. I would do today. I I hold the D with my first finger. And then you do a You start vibrato after you play that. Not the, not like you hear the money. Those two, I synchronize my middle fingers in both hands because that's always. I give simultaneous impulse with both middle fingers. Whether. Very incisive, but immediate, mm -hmm. immediately vibrate, but not before. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. Better. Bars, bum, bum. No, all it. That's something else we don't want. Wait, wait, wait. So he said how many times? Was this something he came up, like he talked about with everybody all the time? Well, no, how many times I said not to plug before or something. He oh, that's what he meant. He didn't. Yeah. So this was the first time in the class that year you'd come across that, probably. Yeah. Okay. I always wondered about that. <laughs> well, why don't you do it like that? Open it. Put the bow down on the stand. And go like that. Now pick up the bow and then you're sure. <laughs> that's the best way to do it. I mean, why do it halfway? Don't do it halfway. This here, no. <laughs> Just don't have anything. Bomb, bomb. Take a chance. And he did you the same fingering you use now. Yeah. Squeezy. Quite definite. Hit the note. He called it squeezy. He called it squeezing? Yeah. I want a special emphasis on that F sharp. Because you, you, you hit minor and over the first time. Yeah. Over the F sharp minor. It's a different modulation and you make a fuss over it. Was there a cut there or did no. he, he just he, he just decided it was worth demonstrating? I yes. Guess. <laughs> I'm making enough emphasis. There's no emphasis. Hmm. I mean, you, you had a feeling when Haifes comes to you like this close. And then <laughs> you, just know, you think he's going to hit you or something. Really? I mean, That's what it felt like there. No, it, I mean, can you imagine Haifes comes to you like within five inches from your face yeah. and, and plays for you and looks like you like this, you know? So, you, so was it different, like just even from across the room versus closer up? Well, it wasn't that. It was the feeling of, of this, this God coming to you five inches from your face, looking at you like he's going to eat you up. <laughs> and closer, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can see how, look at his face, at his expression, it's like he's going to bite you. This is another spot to watch. This is the only defiant 
to your dentist. Right here. Yes, yes, quite a jump, sir. Da 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 <laughs> it's, he's actually, yeah, it must have felt really close. Very 